Welcome to the Cat Bear Quilts. I'm Kathy Martin, and today I want to tell you about my love for linen. So, linen. Let's talk about it. It is one of the most interesting fabrics in the whole pantheon of fabrics, in my opinion. And fortunately for us, um, very often found, you can find a lot of linen in thrift stores and secondhand shops and charity shops and op shops. Uh, so, but there's the nature of linen is very different than a lot of other fabrics. So I want to talk to you about that. First of all, Linen is a natural fiber. It comes from flax. So it's a plant, just kind of like cotton is a plant. So it has some very interesting properties and also in many ways is similar to cotton, but it has its own thing. Um, before we go there though, I wanna tell you, it's hard to beat a linen pant actually, especially a wide leg linen pant. And do you know that's totally a thing now? They call it coastal grandma. It's like a, actually, I'm kind of doing it right now. It's a, <laughs> what? So I guess even though I'm nowhere near a grandma or coastal, but think Diane Keaton, uh, loose white or cream colored linen shirt, and then kind of like baggy or wide leg linen pants. And I guess with Diane Keaton, you also have to do the little sweater and the hat and the fun, I don't know. Anyway, linen is amazing. It's wonderful to wear and it is actually really fun to quilt with, but only if you go into it with some consideration. And so that's actually some of what we're gonna talk about today. So first, the benefits of linen. It's very soft once it's been worn and washed. If you go to your fabric store and buy linen off the bolt, it sometimes feels like burlap. And so it's like, why would you quilt with that? There are new brands of linen that are a lot softer, but it really is one of those things that just gets softer and softer the more you wear it and wash it. Side note is part of why getting linen shirts or linen pants or skirts from the thrift store or charity shop or op shop um, is so great because it's actually already been worn and washed, but you don't even have to do the work of wearing it and make it softer or wash it 16 times. Somebody's already done that for you. Uh, and so a lot of times when you're shopping and I've talked about how I shop by feel, uh, I'll feel and then I'll go, that's linen. <laughs> it has a very distinct feel. And so that's one of the benefits is that it's soft um, it's very absorbent. I actually did a little experiment um, in prep for this video, and I took a tablespoon of water and poured it on my ironing board and put a piece of linen down on it. I did not press, I just like gently laid it down on top and it just like wicked it right up, just like, it just sucked all the water up. And it was really funny because it, just kept pulling it out to the edges of the fabric, which I thought was, it was actually really fun <laughs> to watch, but I'm kind of nerdy and I have that science background. So that's the kind of thing like observe. Um, but it absorbs easily and well, and the fibers of linen swell with the addition of moisture. And this is why towels and sheets and kitchen towels are just kind of generally called linens because they were made from linen. They absorb, they clean well, they wash up well, um, and they dry quickly. Uh, if you think about if you've ever had an actual linen kitchen towel, you can wring it out and shake it and throw it over your oven handle and it'll dry just in a heartbeat. But it does stretch, which is both a pro and a con. It crinkles up really well, which is a pro and a con. It holds a crease really well, so if you, however you put it, it will hold that, which is great. So if you press it, um, especially with steam or starch, it will hold that crease. So it makes for very flat seams, uh, particularly if you put heat on it. 
It doesn't scorch easily. If you look at your iron, it is the very last setting. It's like you can put the hottest iron on it and it won't burn it and it actually is what makes it smooth and works really well. It provides a lot of texture to the look of a quilt uh, because it is actually very textural. Um, the threads are very often not totally uniform and so they are bigger and smaller all throughout the whole quilt, or I'm sorry, throughout the whole fabric. I have to throw back to when my husband and I were living in PA and we went on a trip to the Poconos. So somewhere, I have no idea where, somewhere between Pittsburgh PA and the Poconos, we stopped and went to a living history museum, <laughs> which is so random and so like us. We did this whole half day in this living history museum and I got to see linen being made and it is a process. So they pull the fibers out and they have to be brushed and then spun. And then once they're spun then they can be woven it's hypoallergenic, which I did not know until watching this lengthy video, <laughs> and it's lint free. So just a lot of benefit. There are some challenges working with linen, both wearing linen and working with linen in quilts. It is sheer, uh, not so semi-transparent, um, which if you're wearing it as clothing can have an impact. Um, if you're quilting and you recognize that it has that sheer component, if you're using a white linen, for example, and you want the end result of your quilt to look white, then you have to consider your batting. So you would need to use white batting because if you use a natural color, beige or cream or even almost tan, that will come through and your white will not look white. So that's one of those things um, it's not necessarily negative, but you have to consider it. The crinkly part that is so great about quilts, it wrinkles. So it hold, holds a crease, pro, it wrinkles, con, at least in wearing linen. And for that same reason, both the kind of crinkly nature, wrinkly nature, and the fact that it stretches, it's a little bit challenging to keep it on grain. Um, so when you're doing your cuts for piecing, because it can kind of wiggle and stretch, and when it when you prepare your fabric, which we're going to talk a lot about, um, if you want the if you want the grain to be nice and tight and on the same line of your piecing, it can be a little bit tricky to do that. I do want to talk about oh, there's one the biggest one. What? Why the the biggest problem <laughs> with linen is it frays really, really easily and ravels. If you're quilting and you're using a quarter inch seam allowance, which is not a very big seam allowance, as it frays, um, the risk is that it can fray all the way down into your piecing and then pull apart in the end result. And linen, especially on the bolt, can be expensive. Um, even thrift store shirts or pants, if you're lucky to find them, uh, can be a little more pricey, especially if the person doing the pricing is aware that it's linen. I have this beautiful heathered blue, this was a men's shirt, and I'm going to put this hopefully where you can see it. Um, right here on this edge, I've put it up against the dark you can see where I have pulled some threads out and right there at the end, actually on my mat, you can see to the edge, that's an eighth of an inch of ravel uh, where it, I pulled a, a couple of threads or three or four and it did that. I actually started one going, you can see right here, this is two strands and just those two strands made a pretty significant difference. And it probably won't take me much to get another couple of threads started. Of course, now that I've said that it will. Um, there we go, there's a couple of more. So that is four threads that I have pulled right here. It's picked up a third at that little break. And suddenly we've lost if you're doing a quarter inch seam allowance, then an eighth of an inch is half of your seam. Um, so you're almost, you know, 
you do that two more times and now you're into where your pieces actually connect. Um, so one of the pieces of advice about that is if you use spray starch, that works kind of like glue and keeps the threads in place and they don't snag as easily. See that right there? That's not a lot of thread that I pulled out or not a lot of those fibers. And you can see here and here how much fabric potentially could get lost. Um, so you can use spray starch and you can also make your stitch size small, stitch length smaller, which will continue to talk about as I break this down. So what I did in this shirt, I actually starched this other side. So this was the one side with where I intentionally raveled and frayed it. And then this is the other side that I put a fair amount of not, I didn't like douse it. I didn't, I didn't baptize it in spray starch, but I did give it a pretty good spray. Um, and here are some threads that are sticking out and you can see it will still pull, um, but I'm having to kind of work at it a little bit. There it goes. Now I've gotten to a place I can feel the spray starch. It's not wanting to pull right there. It's a little bit, it's, so it's been kind of glued, glued down a little bit more. So that is one good way to kind of address um, the, the propensity that it has to fray and ravel is just use some, some spray starch. Sometimes you have a very open weave with actually pretty large fibers and threads, and sometimes it's a very tight weave. The tight weave ones, um, don't feel as soft uh, often, but they are a little easier to cut. Uh, and so I have an ex example of that. So here's that orange linen. I find a lot of linen in the orange family in our thrift stores around here. I don't, I don't know why that is, but I do. So this is a heathered, a little more open weave. You can actually even see where when I took the pocket off of this, it's so open that you can see the holes where I took those stitches out. This orange linen is a little bit, the, the threads are a little smaller, the weave is just a little bit tighter. I can still see the weave itself and actually you can see, because this is a little bit lighter, you can see my mat beneath it. So that's that kind of sheer transparent quality. I heard someone say that recently that like if you're if you're using different fabrics together, different types of fabrics together, which sometimes people will say substrates, which I really, really like that word. I don't know that I like it in this context. But if you're using so like linen and cotton or linen and chambray, which is actually cotton or linen and denim, um, if you make your stitch size smaller, it won't fray. And I thought to myself, that doesn't make any sense because if my seam is right here, this is still fraying on the edge. But what that person meant by that and what I have come to find out is true, it won't keep the edge from fraying, but it will keep the fraying from going through your seam and into your piecing. So that's the point of making your stitch length much smaller. It's not to keep it from fraying at the edge. It's to keep that fray from getting so far down at that when it hits the seam, the seam will stop it if the stitches are small enough and it won't fray into your piecing. So if you've heard that and thought like I did, well, that doesn't stop that edge from fraying. It doesn't, but it keeps your fraying from getting all the way down into what would be the visible part of your quilt. So, just good to know. Open weaves and also if it's really soft there, we talked about it being stretchy. An open weave has more give. So you can really get some, some distance out of that, uh, which is great when you're wearing it because there's give there and some of us need it, that give. I wish you could feel this. I wish there was a feel button. <laughs> on YouTube and you could feel this one does not want to give as much as this one does. This one really has some serious stretch in it. This one does not. And I suspect that that's because this one is a tighter weave. I have this quilt that I made 
that will probably be a quilt story before long uh, for our beloved John and his wife, Abby, and their baby, Wells. And I, this is all men's shirts. The whole top is men's shirts. And I decided, because it's not very big, that I wanted to use all this white linen from a men's shirt that I had. It was already so soft. And the other pieces were also soft. I have a, you know, a little very soft twill and then this navy. And I love this pattern. And there are sections in here. This are, these are tiny little pieces. It's, um, I think it would probably be qualified as postage stamp. So they were inch and a half by an inch and a half. And then after seam allowance in each little square ends up exactly an inch. The linen did really well uh, until I got to these long strips. So this is, it's, it's designed to make a block, but it's really strips at a time. And there are several of these where there's a run of like the equivalent of six or seven blocks. And what I found because of that linen and because of the give that it would it was hard to keep a nice, straight, tight, precise strip. And when I did the piecing, um, I did not know at the time that I sh probably shouldn't use steam. And so I would press it with steam, which would stretch it just a little bit. And then I would attach the other piece and I would press it with steam, which would stretch a little bit. So when I went to do my nesting seams, they did not line up. And many of those, strips, I had to actually seam reap the, like for example, this little blue square, take it off, cheat in another quarter of an inch because I had gained a quarter of an inch in that process. And probably because I default at ironing rather than pressing. So I did not put my iron straight down on it. I was maybe slightly pulling and with steam, as those natural fibers absorbed the moisture and even the slight pulling, it stretched those pieces out of shape. And then that made piecing and seam nesting really, really challenging. So learn from me, learn from my mistakes. This is actually how I've come to have all these opinions about linen because I did this really, really small pieces with strips and then hit it with water and it made a... <laughs> harder. I think in my experience with working with linen, you can do small piecing. Absolutely. Um, but depending on how open your weave is and how responsive it is, how stretchy it is, uh, the bigger pieces would be easier to work with. I'm not saying that it would be better. I'm just saying it would be easier. And if you're using little pieces, you definitely do not want to, or if you're using little but long, you definitely do not want to put steam and definitely do not iron, you wanna press. And then in addition to that, I have imagined that if you were doing a lot of HSTs, so half square triangles where a bunch of points come together, just like we saw in that blue shirt, sometimes the corners, if that was a very sharp corner right there, and even one or two threads were pulled out. So if it's on the bias and it's that really severe triangle and you lose three or four threads, the next thing you know, you're right there at your seam. So before I fold this up and put it away, I wanted to let you see for yourself, we talked about the crinkle and the texture that linen brings. Obviously the quilting adds a lot too, but it draws up when it goes through the wash and into the dryer. And you can see just how much texture and how much crinkle. In fact, when I washed this quilt for the first time before I gave it to Abby and John for Wells, it drew up so much that I was actually like, whoa. I mean, it was beautiful, but I wasn't sure. Not everybody likes a heavy duty textural crinkly. So if you're looking for that smooth flat, this might not be the fabric for you. But anyway, one more shot so you can see that. Isn't that the prettiest? So of course, because I'm who I am, I did an experiment and I want you to see it. 
Um, so I actually have two almost identical cream linen shirts that have been awaiting breakdown. And so I washed them both. I treated this first shirt like I was gonna wear it. Um, just like this was a garment as opposed to fabric for quilting. So on this side, which was the right side facing out, I put it on my iron board and I ironed it with steam just like I would, well, actually just like I did when I ironed this shirt and the linen pants that I won um, to prep for the video. And I did not press, I ironed it like a shirt. I just ironed it like I would if I was gonna wear it. And you can see it is smooth. So it is smooth. I didn't do the back, so by contrast, here's the back. So you can see how rough and textural that is. Here's the front. Hopefully already, even in just the shot, you can see the difference between this side and this side. This side is, is steam, just, just a very, very hot iron set on the linen setting with steam. This side, I sprayed with spray starch and I, doused it pretty good. I did not soak it, but I definitely sprayed a fair amount of spray starch on this side of the shirt. And while it was still wet, I ironed it with my iron. And I hope you can see, it is far smoother on this side than it is on this side. It has all those little fibers have been glued together with the starch and it is, it is so smooth. But look, just then when I did that, it made that crease. <laughs> so it wrinkles. I hope you can see in the overhead shot, I'm praying that it's there. Um, I actually did this for the sake of the video, but I'm very bad to do this when I iron my clothes is I'll tug and pull to try to get it nice and flat. And sometimes, I don't know if you can see this pocket has a curve right here. So this is up and this is, so if I were to cut, let's say for quilting purposes, and try to cut a nice straight strip or square out of that section, it is off grain now. So because I've ironed it, and tugged and kind of pulled, threads in the weave are a little warpy. And honestly, I did that with the quilt that I formerly showed you. And so some of those strips, if you look closely at them, they're not really on grain. And when I did wash it and dry it and it pulled up, it did distort those nice straight lines. You know, it reminds me of my hair now that I have gray hair. I can, if I want my hair to look smooth, I have to put heat on it and probably product. And I can get it smooth, but the minute I go outside, if there's humidity, if it rains, if I run my hands through it, it wants to go back to not being smooth. That's kind of the way linen is. It has, it's gonna do its thing and I can make it do something else, but if left to its own devices, it's gonna go back. So, and you, that actually is funny because I was thinking about how that linen, how they brush it and it looked like hair to me. So maybe that's helpful. So this was experiment number one. Um, and then I wanna show you experiment number two and then what my recommendation would be out of that. For the orange, it was very, very, very wrinkly. I misted it with water and not, I did not soak it, I didn't drench it, I just, I have a spray bottle of water, I just misted the whole thing, and I took it and I did the thing that moms do when they fold um, sheets and it scares everybody in the house, it's probably gonna be really, really loud. I did that so that it kind of sucked the water down into the fabric a little bit, and then I laid it out on a flat surface and let it dry, overnight actually. Uh, and when I got up this morning, I, it's been folded since then, so there are creases in it. So this is, you're probably thinking, that is not smooth. Apart from the crease, creases where I've folded it and now handled it, it's relatively smooth. And I was surprised at how those big wrinkles 
had really disappeared. So this is water without heat. And this is starch with no heat. So I did basically the same thing, misted it with starch, let it dry naturally on its own. And then I hit it, actually I, it was smooth like this before and then I hit it with a dry iron. Because it was already dry and because it had settled in, it kept the grain much straighter just before I even hit it with the iron. It was actually smoother. I would not suggest that you do this method uh, because it does distort potentially that grain. And even though it looks beautiful and smooth, um, your piecing may not be as straight as you want. And then on the steam side, kind of same thing. The action of ironing pulled it a little bit out of true. Whereas these two, if you were to look at it pretty close, there's not a lot of that warpy, it's, it's pretty straight on grain. And if you are feeling like it's either really ravelly and a fraying badly, then I would go with the starch method. If it's a very tight weave and you're not doing really small pieces, it may not need starch, you could do just the water method. So it's up to you, obviously, but if I were not sure whether it was gonna ravel easily, I think I would just take my piece of fabric, shake it out, make sure it's dry, give it a light or even a heavy um, dose of spray starch, and then just let it dry and do its own thing. It will not be as smooth. It will not feel as good and smooth to the touch as this will. But the thing to remember, and I actually have this here so you can see it, this is the almost identical shirt just as it came out of the dryer. You see that? So it may look like this when you're doing your piecing, but you have to remember when you get all done with it and wash it and dry it, it's gonna do this. So there's a certain aspect of having it a little closer to that when you're doing your piecing so that it doesn't lure you into feeling like it's gonna be that smooth. It's not, it's gonna be like this. It's soft, so soft, but very textural and wrinkly. So that way you know what to expect of your final quilt. We don't want any surprises if we can help it. So there was one final thing I wanted to say, well, probably not one final thing. <laughs> Now is a great time to get to your thrift store and look for linen. And you think, why? It's the end of the season. It's the end of the season. And people are beginning to pull out their fall clothes. They're evaluating what from their wardrobe they want to keep and what they want to get rid of. And so it's actually a time, both the very beginning of the season, so the end of the cool part of spring and the end of the hot part of summer. Now, in the South, I will wear this linen shirt that I have on until November or December, uh, because it might be 76 degrees in <laughs> December in Alabama. So, but there is that kind of seasonal changing feel and people do tend to evaluate what's there in their wardrobe to put, make room for their fall clothes and they will donate their linen pants and shirts that they have outgrown or that has become misshapen or has weird stains on it. Um, so it's a really good time in the next few weeks to hit up your thrift store and look for some linen that people have donated. Anyway, thanks for joining me today while I talked about my love for linen and using it in quilting. I hope this has been helpful for you. So I'm Kathy Martin and this is the Catbird Quilts. Thanks for watching. If you look at it really close, I just put my head directly in the line of the overhead camera. <laughs> P.S. Linen weighs more than some cottons, which I would not have thought. I would have said linen was lighter, but from an actual weight standpoint, it can be heavier than cotton. That's just it.